okay. So we're here on the Schnoesboro booth with uh, Scott from Harvestman. Hello. How are you? I'm good. So um, what we're really interested in is, you know, obviously Modular has had a major surge. I mean, you know, you've been doing this for a long time, but what do you attribute the recent kind of rise in popularity to? I'm not sure of any one cause that could be uh, responsible for this, but I'm enjoying it nonetheless. <laughs> do you think, I mean, the other thing is obviously, you know, your stuff is primarily digital as well, which is actually maybe in the beginning was seen as kind of, oh, I'm not sure about now, it's really sort of seen as the innovative side of uh, Eurorack and that side of things. Do you think that's where we're going, more, more digital, less analog perhaps? I think so. It's taken a very long time for my own products to be adopted in certain places because of the digital stigma, but especially with the uh, efforts of what Roland are doing now, and I think it's that type of design will be receiving more attention in the future, yes. Well, that's interesting, I guess, because that was one of the questions I wanted to ask, because obviously Roland famously now entered the Eurorack market in quite a big way. What do you think that's going to do? Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? I think it will be good for everyone because uh, I believe that their products will find their way into different retail places that have previously, be, previously been unaccessible to other makers. And I think the attention that their products will get will spill over into everyone else's offerings. No, that's interesting you say that. So where do you think um, improvements need to be? I mean, Eurorack is um, the massive sort of binding force behind a lot of this, the standardization. Is there a move towards maybe a Eurorack 2.0? And does it need, what, what does it need to have? You know, where, where are the shortcomings that, you know, we want to be addressed in maybe a new version of the same size format? I think most everyone's complaints involve the, the power supply specifications, the interconnections. As far as the, uh, the physical interface between the, uh, the performer and the instrument, I, I enjoy the simplicity that Eurorack and small format modulars in general have, where you have a much more direct relationship between the, uh, your physical action and the sound that you produce, more, more like a guitar than a synthesizer with a keyboard and I don't see any way of improving upon that. But I think, I think that most of the complaints over this uh, type of instrument have been purely technical, mostly so related. So like bus, busing and that kind of stuff? Yes. And um, the other thing is, uh, what, where do you think that uh, things are going to be going in the future? I mean, you know, obviously there's been a lot of East West Coast kind of thing. Uh, is, there a, is there a third way? I've been watching efforts pretty closely to uh, develop a, a preset selection bus. Uh, several manufacturers have been working together on some sort of specification. Some of my own designs will talk to whatever bus standard is out there eventually. Uh, okay, and, and in terms of what you're doing, I mean, when you're creating modules, are these kind of things that, c that come to you creatively, or are you uh, working on feedback from the people who are using your existing stuff? How does that work for you? It's mostly, uh, my designs mostly come from uh, personal needs that I need to fulfill that can't be satisfied with other products in the marketplace. Right. Okay. And so, uh, in terms of, uh, this was a, another question that we were really interested in also, was do you think that there's going to be uh, a, a large bump? You know, do you think that basically there's a, a gateway, Roland is kind of like a gateway drug almost into the, into the modular world? Yeah, I think there will be a nice little bubble for over the short term, over the next couple of years. I don't know where it will go after that, but it's certainly going to be interesting from now on. Okay, we got a couple of other questions. These are sort of standard questions we're doing across everybody. Um, if you were starting out, you know, what, do, what starting out with a Eurorack system, what are what are the essentials that you would personally recommend that people kind of would would get together when they're just starting out in modular? For the, I don't really uh, care much for uh, very simple basic designs, particularly in the, the, when it comes to the oscillator or tone generator part. I recommend a, uh, a digital oscillator with some sort of a wavetable facility so that you may have a large set of tones to uh, subtract from further down the signal chain. I also prefer uh, filter, analog filters with lots of character, two-pole designs mostly such as the Wasp and the Polyvox. Yeah, I've really been enjoying two-pole filters recently. Just, there's just something that you don't hear every day about them, isn't there? The, 
but I think the most important part of a, a starter system would be uh, a wealth of control options, modulators and, con and hands-on controllers that are easy to uh, sculpt a control voltage signal to uh, send around to your fancy expensive tone generator module. I think it's something that's overlooked a lot in uh, a lot of designs these days. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Nick.